taking your integrals. Now, um, note uh, note that uh, the limit as x goes up to a, if I pick some point on the real line um, of uh, the integral, this guy, is going to be the same as the limit as x goes down to a from the right. Okay, and the reason for that is because x is a continuous, continuous random variable. Okay. All right. So let's do an example here. Let's do an example. Here's a good way to start. Um, consider the PDF. And I'm just going to say it's, you know, the PDF for the random variable called x. And let's say it's equal to c times x squared times the indicator function of x being between 0 and 2. Okay? And again, uh, just to remind you what, what th this indicator function evaluates to 1 if the statement inside the braces is true. It's 0 if the statement inside the braces is false. So another way to write it, perhaps a, a, a way that you're more familiar with, but it takes more ink, is like this. It's going to be, it's going to take on the value of c times y squared for y in the interval 0 to 2 and 0 otherwise. Okay? So, <clears throat> because, so not that one of the one of the properties that, that we have here is that the, the integral of this thing over over the entire real line has to be one, right? <clears throat> that is, if I integrate f sub x of x dx over the reals, I get one. So let me just put that in there. Um, negative infinity to infinity, and I'm just going to substitute in, I'm going to sub in all of this stuff with the indicator function and everything right there, okay? Oops. Throwing commas around like they're free or something. Uh, I don't know about free, but they're, they're cheap. They're all over the place, right? They're like here and there and everywhere. See all these commas? Okay, so I can write this like this, right? So, what does this tell me to do? It, this says that the integrand is actually going to be zero whenever my, whenever my x value falls outside of this closed interval zero, two. So this, so these indicator functions, when they appear as products inside in the integrand, it tells me, it gives me a big hint about what my limits of integration need to need to be, right? Tells me that I can write this as the integral just from zero to two of c x squared dx, right? Good. So I can pull the c out, and then how do you integrate this thing? I think it's like this, right? Zero to two, right? And then so this is going to be c times. 2 cubed over 3 minus 0, right? So this whole thing is uh, 8 thirds times c. The idea here is we want to solve for c. These kinds of problems pop up sometimes if you're if if you know the the general form of a probability density function for you know the to, to sort of track the behavior of a variable you're looking at but you don't know how to scale it right you need to to, to figure out what the scalar is so that it becomes a probability distribution function or so that you can get a make it a probability density function so all this implies that c must equal three eighths okay good so now, I know what my probability density function looks like. f sub x of x is 
3 eighths times x squared times the indicator function of x being between 0 and 2. Good job, y'all.